When talking about a sandbox game, player freedom is an important point. So when missions are doled out within these free-flowing structures, it becomes a test to see how much freedom can be afforded to the player without breaking the game. Fortunately, there are a number of games that successfully manage this, having the narrative intertwine with the various choices available. So, without further ado, let's take a look at 15 of the best sandbox missions of all time. Hyrule Castle – The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild As part of the quest to defeat Ganon, Hyrule Castle is the largest and most intriguing dungeon in the game. There are multiple ways to enter, whether it's through the docks, the underground, or by manipulating physics and runes enough to fly in on a rock. Various other threats also lurk en route to Ganon, including Lynels, but there's also plenty of good loot to gather, like the Hylian Shield, if you're brave enough. Though the Sanctum is your ultimate goal, you're free to explore the location at will. The End – Minecraft The End in Minecraft isn't so much a stated mission as a goal that players can work towards and achieve. It involves venturing to The End, an alternate dimension teeming with Endermen and slaying the Ender Dragon. This involves gathering Eyes of Ender, locating a stronghold with an end portal to slot them in, and then fighting the dragon, though you'll first need to destroy the tower shielding it. Still, there are a variety of strategies available, from the usual arrows and swords to deploying beds that somehow deal massive damage to the dragon. The Bank Job – Dishonored – Death of the Outsider Dishonored 2 may be considered the better game overall, but Death of the Outsider contains one of the best missions in the series with the bank job. The objective is to retrieve the twin-bladed knife from Dolores Michael's deposit and loan bank. You could enter through the rooftop via the trash disposal or through the sewers, administer some laudanum to put everyone to sleep which must be acquired from an auction or via the black market, and either open the vault by obtaining the key or dropping it down and breaking through the sewers in the process. Of course, this is in addition to whatever stealthy or chaotic approaches are taken in the mission itself. Hellbound – Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain One of the more intense missions in The Phantom Pain, Hellbound seems deceptively simple at first. Make contact with and then extract Dr. Emmerich. Stealth is encouraged, making companions like D-Dog useful for simply avoiding enemy soldiers, though playing at night is also an option. However, it's possible to travel off the beaten path and complete other objectives like gathering resources. Upon rescuing Emmerich, it's up to you how he's extracted, along with how to deal with Metal Gear Sahelanthropus when it unceremoniously drops in. The Silent Cartographer – Halo Combat Evolved The Silent Cartographer sees Master Chief and UNSC Marines dropping down on the Ringworld's beach and immediately devolves into a battle against the Covenant as you storm the front before commandeering a Warthog. Eventually, the player needs to return to unlock the Forerunner facility, tackling hunters and camouflaged elites in the process. Though the goals are clear, the overall non-linear nature of the exploration, coupled with the tense combat, vehicles, and sense of freedom, was simply unprecedented for shooters at the time. Such is the level's brilliance that it's still considered one of the most revered in the Halo franchise. New Alexandria – Halo Reach New Alexandria represents some more incredible sandbox design by Bungie. Essentially, you fly in a Falcon with Cat to three separate areas to battle enemies and destroy three Covenant Jammers. Sounds simple enough, but the order for destroying each Jammer can change. You might head to Synoviet Center first in one playthrough, but then prioritize New Alexandria Hospital in another. The encounters are also random, and you even receive two random support objectives, from helping Buck to assisting soldiers in eliminating Covenant squads. There's a lot to see in this level, and its replay value is a testament to Bungie's design. Volga – Metro Exodus Following the Aurora's departure from Moscow, Volga becomes available and really showcases the more open-ended level design of Metro Exodus. There's more freedom to explore the landscape despite the oppressive cult present, completing optional objectives and finding collectibles in any order the player chooses. You still have main objectives to complete, and depending on the choices made, killing or sparing various individuals, rescuing prisoners, etc., the chapter can either end with Duke being shot and the cult being hostile, or in the Aurora being granted safe passage. The Harvester and Last Harvest – Deus Ex Mankind Divided These two side missions sees Adam investigating a murder. The first involves inspecting the crime scene and gathering clues, conversing extensively with Detective Carl Montag, looking for evidence, locating different notes, and even questioning any civilians nearby. 
Complete all of this and the last harvest becomes available, wherein you nab the killer. It isn't that simple though, and based on various choices, from dialogue chosen to clues located, you may even get into a fight with Montag. It's a compelling mystery and one of the more involving missions in Prague. Citus Inversus, Hitman 2016 As the final mission in Hitman 2016, Citus Inversus sees Agent 47 traveling to a high-tech Gamma hospital in Hokkaido, Japan, to take down Eric Soders and Yuki Yamazaki. The title is renowned for returning to a more sandbox-heavy style of gameplay, and Citizen Versus is perhaps the best example. Along with the usual challenges that add concealed weapons, unique starting locations, and disguises, there are multiple opportunities for eliminating your targets. Masquerade as Yamazaki's personal trainer, or serve her the more poisonous parts of Fugo Fish. Sabotage Soder's donor heart, or access the hospital's mainframe and kill him with the surgery robot. The choice is yours. The Big Score, Grand Theft Auto V While Rockstar gets a decent amount of flack for not letting you deviate from mission objectives in its games, Grand Theft Auto V does offer a decent amount of freedom. The Big Score offered two unique ways to complete its heist, being subtle, which involves taking the gold with minimum fuss and escaping in muscle cars, or going loud and drilling into the vault, creating a ruckus and using helicopters to get away. Each has their own unique setup missions, and depending on the crew chosen, you may see unintended consequences, like losing 18 million from the final tally. As the heist to end all heist, it's well worth the hype. Just make sure not to die. The Challenge The Witness The very nature of The Witness's island allows the player to wander about and solve puzzles, using the perspective gained for future solutions. The Challenge, located in the imposing mountain, is the ultimate culmination of it all. It consists of 14 line puzzles that must be solved using everything the player has learned thus far. There is a time limit, as indicated by the music playing, which amounts to a little less than 7 minutes. If you fail though, you can't just attempt the same puzzles again. They're generated differently each time and thus require different solutions. There could be in innumerable ways to solve this, all based on what the island has taught you. Granted, this also means many, many, many ways to fail, so keep that in mind before banging your head against it. Battle the End Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater What's amazing about this fight is how many ways it can go down. You could fight evenly and use the thermal goggles to track him. You could capture the end's parrot and release it, then use the directional mic to properly locate him, or even kill the parrot enraging the end but also making it difficult to be tracked. The forest's large area ensures that anything can happen, including Snake being knocked out and carried back to prison. But you could also avoid the battle entirely. Either snipe the end when he appears at the warehouse, or wait a week in real life, which could be bypassed on the PlayStation 2 by altering the internal clock, for him to die of old age. 3-Way Saints Row the Third The finale of Saints Row the Third is an all-out war between Stag, the Saints, and the Luchadors. This means heading to three different locations and clearing out any foes present, which can be done in any manner you desire, and it's even possible to call in some backup. It's a mess of explosions, tank battles, and airstrikes that eventually culminates in making a decision. Either rescue Shandi and Viola, or take down Kilbane. Both decisions result in different consequences in follow-up missions, whether it's partaking in a movie shoot or battling Daedalus, Stag's massive floating air carrier. Fortress Assaults Middle-Earth Shadow of War the post-game Shadow Wars grind in Middle-Earth Shadow of War, at least at launch, could be pretty annoying but the very concept of fortress assaults is still very cool. You dominate different orc captains and take them into battle, acquiring siege beasts, caragors, different troop types, and so on to take these massive fortresses. The assaults involved scaling the walls and capturing zones within before taking out the overlord, but things can change depending on how many war chiefs were killed, since they can appear as many bosses, the type of fortresses and its units, and so on. It offers some fun variety and plays off of the Nemesis system pretty well. Liberations Just Cause 3 Liberations were introduced in the first game, but Just Cause 3 offers the best take on the mechanic yet. Each settlement has different tasks, usually encouraging you to be super chaotic and cause massive amounts of destruction. The key difference is that you can complete these tasks in any order, and even return later to wrap up any remaining. Combined with new tools like the wingsuit, grappling multiple objects together, and so on, Just Cause 3's liberations provided some good direction for the game's over-the-top sandbox action. So, what are your thoughts on this? 
Go ahead and share them in the comments below. And if you liked this video, please subscribe to the channel and enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon to get new video updates. We upload every day and would really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching.